It's never too early to start planning. No, not for retirement, although that's definitely some good advice. But for your endgame character builds for Worlds Collide, the open world randomizer for Final Fantasy VI, or three if you're an American. One of the skills in getting through a Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide seat is constantly thinking about what your characters will be doing other than goofing around on the airship. Since it's a randomizer, you've got to be able to adapt and strategize on the fly when certain weapons or magic or abilities or items become available to you, whether it's completing a check, losing looting chess, or browsing around shops. As the saying goes, the best defense is a good offense, and since we're going for speed above all, builds tend to fall into one of two different categories, physical and magical. This guide will help you navigate through the various stages of the game and give you things to look out for while you're playing. Character stats will most likely be the singular most important thing to influence the type of build you'll be making, with character abilities being a close second. However, even if your character has decent stats and a good ability, if you can't find spells or equipment to supplement the build, then your character won't be as effective as they can be. So let's drill down into the two different build types, the first one being physical damage. Although not as potent in the beginning of the game, physical builds can be very powerful towards the end of the seed, especially as you near the 9,999 damage cap. With a physical build, there are more ways around that damage cap per turn with things like Genji Glove or Offering or Dragonhorn or Sword Tech 7 or Weapon Procs than in a magical build, be it by Gem Box or X Magic or Quick, which I'll go over the magical builds later. Physical builds use the damage formula that will go off the weapon's battle power plus the character strength or bigger stat. I'm not really sure why they have two different names here. But there are three exceptions to this particular rule in terms of weapons. The Atma weapon, depending upon whether the stronger Atma weapon flag is on or off, which ignores defense and will use the normal damage calculator, but then does an additional step to alter the damage based on your level and the character's current HP value compared to its max, so make sure to keep it high. The Valiant Knife, which ignores defense and will use the normal damage calculator, but then does an additional step to alter the damage based on the current amount of HP that your character is missing. So keep the HP on the low side of things and protect them with defensive spells and armor. And thirdly is Fixed Dice, which deals damage based on the numbers on the dice rolled on the screen and your level, as well as ignoring defense while foregoing strength or battle power altogether for this particular weapon. So for a physical build outside of the Fixed Dice scenario, you're going to want to use a high strength character and, depending upon the character stats options for the seed, the characters with the best strength in the vanilla game are as follows. Umar at 57, Sabin at 47, Gao 44, Cyan 40, Edgar and Shadow 39, Locke 37, Setzer 36, Celis 34, Terra 31, Mog 29, Shrego 28, Realm 26, and Gogo 25. Since Umaro is an auto berserked character with a tiny equipable pool, depending upon the flag set, I usually don't use Umaro outside of not having any other options or for trips to the Coliseum or Fanatics Tower. This also means that for Esper bonuses, consider the Strength Plus or speed plus options depending upon if you're using jump and use the HP plus bonuses for a Valiant Knife or Atma weapon user. Aside from just the strength stat, if your character starts with an ability that uses the physical damage calculation, that will also play a factor in your decision. Everyone, except Gao, womp womp, can use fight, but abilities like jump, rage, throw, tool, sword tech, and some of the blitzes will use the physical damage formula for battle, and I'll go over them more in detail later. I mentioned the equipable item pool, which is important in choosing physical builds as well. If your character can't use the really good weapon you just found, then it won't be a viable strat for them going forward. Again, depending upon the options, this will elevate certain characters like Celeste, Terra, and Locke, along with Edgar, who could equip the best swords in the game normally, as well as Edgar and Mog, who can equip all of the lances for jumping. Speaking of equipment, let's talk about what gear we should be using with physical builds. For fight, the weapons that you want to be looking for besides the three that I mentioned earlier are the following. The Illumina, 255 battle power weapon which cannot miss, that can be used from the back row, that deals double damage if you have 20 magic points, and can randomly cast Pearl. Ragnarok with 255 battle power that will also deal double damage if you have 20 magic points that randomly cast Flare, and possibly the Sniper, although only having 172 battle power, it gets more valuable due to its ability to randomly proc for up to 3 times damage on floating 
exploding targets, of which all of the final boss and a lot of the more difficult bosses are, or one and a half times damage to all others. And those are going to be your late game build weapons. If you don't have access to those items, you can make do in the early game with weapons that have high battle power or ones that benefit from not having to be in the front row, because then you could use it without the fear of being physically damaged for twice as much. To round out your character build for fight, you're going to want to use equipment that, once again, boosts the strength or vigor stat, like a red cap plus four, headband or tiger mask plus three, circlet plus two for helmets, behemoth suit plus six, power sash or red jacket or genji armor plus five, chocobo suit plus three, among other armors. You're going to also need some bling bling in the form of relics. Atlas armlet is the go-to for increasing physical build as it gives a 25% damage increase. Same goes for the hero ring, but they do not stack, meaning that you only should put on one per character. Other damage boosting relics include the Hyper Wrist, which gives 50% bonus strength, the Rage Ring, which gives plus 5 strength among elemental protections to Fire and Thunder. Remember, Fixed Dice doesn't use strength in its damage formula at all, so do not use any of those relics if using the Fixed Dice because they'll be as useful as a screen door in a tornado. Other very important physical build relics include the Offering, which allows you to attack 4 times per turn at the penalty of each attack doing only 50% damage, so in essence, it's sort of like two full attacks, but it's untargetable so be careful when using this especially in the final battle when the order of operations for killing the parts of the bosses matter however there are three weapons that do not incur that 50 percent damage penalty of the offering the valiant knife the atma weapon and the fixed dice those three that i mentioned earlier so this relic is most useful for those weapons the offering should never be used with the illumina or the ragnarok since those items will always do double damage if you have the magic points so the offering offers no increased damage benefits and it renders the fight command untargetable, which is one of its main drawbacks. Another relic, the Genji Glove, will allow you to use a second weapon and forego a shield, so this will allow you to do two full power attacks per turn, but you're going to need to be careful since you're giving up that shield for defense. Also, if you've got good armor, then consider a gauntlet for certain weapons that can be two-handed, which doubles the battle power of said weapon at the expense of not holding a shield. This equates to roughly a 9% damage boost early on, increasing to upwards of 50% for level 30 or higher depending upon the weapon that you're using so it's a higher ceiling but it's again more risky because you don't have a shield another more niche relic is the muscle belt which gives the user 50 percent more hp so this is useful on weapons like the atma weapon or valiant knife that deal damage based on your hp I want to briefly mention the rage ability here as it will sometimes use the fight command and other times it'll use the special attack of the monster and in certain cases the special attack is a physical attack that does increased damage from a normal fight command. The most obvious one is Stray Cat that uses the cat scratch ability to deal four times the normal damage of fight. The gold bear rage does 2.5 times the damage if you don't have Stray Cat and there are others if you want to look at the rage ranking spreadsheet in the wiki on the Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide website. If you have one of these rages, then kit out your character as if they were using the fight command, but with the added benefit of dealing that much more damage, except for the three weapons that have the weird damage formula that I mentioned earlier. Atma Weapon, Valiant Knife, Fixed Dice. Most of the rage utility I'll cover later on in the magical build section though, and rage is not as useful later on in the game because of the auto berserk that it inflicts in your character, which can become more of a liability in more complicated battles like the final boss and other harder bosses. However, in the case with Stray Cat, the four times extra damage can definitely be worth it. Moving on to other character abilities, the Dragoon Boots Relic or the Natural Jump Command will deal damage based on the physical damage calculation and it gives 1.5 times the damage for all weapons except for the Lances, or Lance, Pearl Lance, Partisan, etc., which gives two times the damage. Jump means that your character won't be on screen to be targeted, however, they'll quote unquote miss their normal turn during the jump animation. In order to mitigate this negative effect, you can boost the speed of the character so that they come down from out of play faster and can jump back up into the air much faster. Obviously, the most important piece of gear for a jump user is the Dragon Horn Relic, which allows for multiple attacks per turn, anywhere from two to four, depending upon if RNGesus wants to bless. 
In terms of gear, you're going to want to look for an Aura Lance, Pearl Lance, Fixed Ice, Atma Weapon, and possibly the Imp Halberd if you have an Imp build, which is more common now with the objective reward of an Imp set for endgame builds. And for the early game, try to find other spears like the Partisan, Gold Lance, or Stout Spear since they will do two times the damage. For the same reasons I mentioned earlier regarding the offering, avoid jumping with the Illumina or Ragnarok unless you have no other alternative or don't have magic points to use its special proc ability. In terms of armor, you're going to also want to consider boosting speed since that will make your character hit that much more during battle if they're faster, so that means a Coronet or Cat Hood at plus two, Regal Crown or Mystery Veil plus one besides the other helmets I mentioned earlier which all give speed bonuses, and a plethora of armors including the biggest Nutkin Suit plus seven, the Mirage Vest or Dark Gear plus six besides some of the others I listed earlier. So besides the relics I already mentioned for fight except for Genji Glove and Offering since they're specific to the fight command, anything that will speed up your characters including Marvel Shoes or Running Shoes that cast the Auto Haste or the Sneak Ring giving a plus five speed bonus is something you're going to want to consider for your jumper. Also of note is the Gauntlet, which does double the battle power of any spear since they could be two-handed, and since your character will be in the air to avoid attacks, the shield loss is mitigated. Now, if you're going to be using another character ability for your attacks instead of the fight or jump command, then I'll introduce you to a concept of a stat stick. It's basically a weapon that you hold solely to boost the stats of your character instead of actually doing damage with it. In the case of a physical build, you're going to want weapons that boost strength or vigor, like the Wing Edge plus 7, Tiger Fangs plus 3, Excalibur plus 2, or Rainbow Brush plus 1, aside from some of the other ones I've already mentioned. But again, if you got one of those other weapons, you're probably going to want to go for Fight or Jump. Another late game character ability that uses Strength is Throw. Thrown weapons deal double damage, ignore defense, are unblockable, and deal full damage from the back row. Damage is based on the battle power of the weapon and can be increased if an enemy is weak to a certain element if that weapon is also of that element. For instance, in the final battle, Tiger is weak to ice, so throw a blizzard at it, which is an ice elemental sword. There are three exceptions to this rule with the throwable skeins, bolt, fire, and water, which are actually magic attacks, and use the magic power stat instead of the strength stat that I'll go over in the the magic section. One last thing I want to mention about throw is that even though Gogo's strength isn't that great, Gogo can mimic any thrown weapon and it will not decrease it from your inventory or you don't even have to have it in your inventory anymore. If you've thrown your last weapon, Gogo can mimic that throw even though that weapon isn't in the inventory anymore. So this increases Gogo's utility in this particular aspect. Tools is a good early and mid game ability and the physical tools that you're going to want are drill, which is 191 battle power and ignores defense. The chainsaw which has 252 battle power and ignores defense. However, it has a one quarter chance to do an instant death attack instead of the normal attack. So drill is usually preferred for its consistency. And lastly, the air anchor, which isn't used for its 128 battle power, but for its ability to insta-kill on the very next turn of the enemy. Sword tech has three abilities that use the physical damage formula, but with the downside of being untargetable. So it's less used for end game, except for the higher sword tech abilities. There's sword tech one or dispatch has 120 battle power and ignores defense. Sword Tech 4 or Quadra Slam has 72 battle power and hits 4 random targets. Sword Tech 7 or Quadra Slice does 4 random target hits with a battle power of 70 but it ignores defense which makes it more powerful than Sword Tech 4. It could even get around the Quad 9's damage cap if you do more than 2500 per attack which makes it good even though it's not targetable. Lastly, there's Blitz with Pummel and Suplex, both of which have more niche uses like Pummel being defense ignoring and Suplex only working on a handful of bosses and a train for memes. Now the other type of build is Magical Damage. The damage calculation is based on the character's magic power and the battle power of the spell that's being cast. Similar to a physical build, you're going to want to use a high magic power character and depending upon the character stats option for the seed, the characters that have the best magic power in the vanilla game are Realm at 44, Terra at 39, Celeste 36, Mog 35, Gowan Strago 34, Shadow 33, and the rest are under 30 except for Umaro at 37. However, since he can only use Storm with a Blizzard Orb and is auto-berserked, I don't consider him for a magic build at all. 
One note is that even though Gogo only has 26 vanilla magic power, Gogo can mimic any spell without spending MP. So it can be very useful if you find lots of gear for them to bump up this stat. As far as Esper bonuses go, you're going to want to use Magic Power Plus, or if you don't have that, MP Plus bonuses, so that you can cast more spells at the expense of dealing more damage. For magical builds, you're always going to want to be using a stat stick for a weapon and other gear to maximize your magic power, such as an Enhancer or Magus Rod plus 7, Aura or a Pearl Lance if you can't use Jump, and Tiger Fangs give plus 3, Elemental Swords, Wing Edge, Rainbow Brushes, Assassins, Mithril Rods plus 2, Excalibur, and all of the other brushes are at plus 1. Yes, the Ragnarok and Illumina also give plus 7 magic power, but you should be really using them for fights since they're much more useful in that manner. For helmets, the Magus Hat plus 5, Cat Hood, Coronator, Circlet plus 4 are the best, and for armor, Behemoth Suit plus 6, Dow Robe, White Dress, Moogle Suit plus 5, Minerva plus 4 are the ones to look out for. With relics, you're going to want to find earrings, which increase magic damage by 25% if you're wearing 1 or 50% if you're wearing 2, and can be supplemented by Hero Ring, so any combination of those two relics will get you 1.5 times the damage. Blizzard Orb gives plus 5 magic power and elemental protection from ice and fire. Barrier Ring gives plus 2 magic power. Other magic helper relics include the Economizer or Gold Hairpin, which reduces the MP cost to either 1 or half, respectively. The Gem Box, which allows 2 magic casts per turn to get around the 9999 damage cap. And the Crystal Orb, which increases your MP by 50% so you can cast more spells. On to character abilities, and obviously magic or X-magic is learned from either Espers or the natural magic if that setting is on. You can also summon Espers, but with the magic command only. I'm not going to go over all of the spells here, but you're going to want to look for Tier 3 Elemental spells, with Tier 2 ones being decent for boss weaknesses, Pearl and Bio for certain bosses with weaknesses to those elements, Flare or Meteor if you really need non-elemental or defense-ignoring magic, and if the seed permits it, obviously Ultima. Merton and Quake can be used if you can protect yourself from the nasty damage it inflicts on your own party. Depending upon the boss weaknesses, nullifications, and absorption of certain elements, your spells and other magical abilities can vary in effectiveness from fight to fight, so keep this in mind when using a magic build. A Fire 2 can be more effective than a Bolt 3 if the boss absorbs lightning or is weak to fire. Other abilities which use the magic damage calculation that are viable for the late game are Lore, which essentially is blue magic from other Final Fantasy games. You're going to want to look for Grand Train and Quasar for the end game, Blowfish for the early game, Arrow, Clean Sweep, and Ocarake for wind, water, elemental damage, and to get you through some of the mid game as well. Defensively, Big Guard, Pearl Wind, and Sour Mouth. Another ability is Shock, which is Leo's in Vanilla, doing 128 battle power, area of effect, non-elemental attack, which is really good for early and mid-game. It kind of falls off towards the end because of better abilities and scaling. Newly introduced is Magitek, which gives Tech Missile a 58 battle power defense-ignoring spell that also inflicts Sap or Seizure, so it can be used throughout the game. As I mentioned earlier, Throw is good anytime and uses magic power for the three elemental schemes, Fire, Bolt, and Water. Most of the blitzes are based on magic power, including Bum Rush. It's an ability that can be learned by going to Duncan's Hut in the World of Ruin after level 42 or right away, depending upon the settings, and is an endgame strategy, although it's not targetable. Other blitzes to note, Air Blade and Fire Dance are AoE attacks, and Aura Bolt is a single target, but both are good in the earlier mid-game. Sword Tech 6, or Stunner, actually uses the magic power stat, along with the battle power of 97 hitting all targets. It doesn't do split damage and is non-elemental and can also inflict stop. So this can work to conserve MP in longer battles, or you could probably just use Sword Tech 5 in Powerer to absorb HP and MP from a random target and then get back to casting spells. For early in mid game there's a few magical abilities that you can use to get by until you find something better in terms of spells or weapons for rage you're going to want to consult the spreadsheet for the rage abilities and which ones to use but again this is something you want to be careful of late game because of the auto berserk property same goes for dance and you're going to want to look for the landslide ability that's similar to flare or tech missile as well as wombat or womp that ignores defense but misses floating targets also unreliable is slots because of rng however sun flare is a bahamut summon and h-bomb is a battle power of 130 so those are better but harder to hit since the game's rng seed sometimes literally won't allow you to roll those slots seven flush and chocobop are a decent early game but as it gets later in the seed you're going to want to avoid this ability 
because of RNG. And those two abilities, even though you can roll them more often, are just not that powerful. There's also Tools of Flash, but it's only got 42 battle power, so in spite of it being non-elemental, it's not very useful except for clearing out mobs due to its AoE attack. So those are the character builds and what to look out for as you're going along in your runs for Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide Randomizer. Any questions or corrections to the video, check out the comments section down below. I've been Thoshwants27, making like a tree and leafing. Until next time.